welcome back. Lastly, we talked about the difference of urine concentration in terms of salt and water for fish compared to um, mammals. In this video, we're actually going to go over the difference between the concentrations and the form of nitrogenous waste in insects and mammals, and also compare fish as well. So uh, last time I actually touched a bit on ammonia and urea, and I'm going to go over that a bit more in detail this time as well. So I'll read the actual dot point. It says, use available evidence to explain the relationship between the conservation of water and the production and excretion of concentrated nitrogenous waste in a range of Australian insects and terrestrial mammals. And the word terrestrial just means land, so land mammals. All right, so before we start, I'm going to go over quickly what nitrogenous waste was again. So this is here, this is protein, and we're going to break down either protein or nucleic acid. And we, when we break them down, we get something called amino acids. So proteins were made out of amino acids. It was a building block of proteins. But the amino acids, they're going to, they contain nitrogen. So they contain nitrogen. And we will even um, break them down even further. We will break down amino acids even further. And when we do, we get something called the amino group. So these groups here. And that's the molecule that we have to get rid of. We have to get rid of the substance. And we can do it in one of three ways. We can either produce uric acid, urea, or ammonia. And I'm quickly going to go over the characteristics of each. Ammonia was highly poisonous and soluble in water. Urea was poisonous, but 10 times, 1,000 times less poisonous than ammonia. So poisonous, but not that poisonous. And it was also soluble, soluble in water. So that, was, that, means, that means it dissolves in water. And uric acid was not poisonous, and it was not soluble in water, so it did not dissolve in water. Um, and also, this needs energy, so it needs energy to be produced. And uric acid needs even more, it needs a lot of energy to be produced, it needs a lot of energy. Whereas ammonia needed little energy to be produced. So in many cases, we, we start with ammonia, but we convert it to urea for mammals. But I'm going to go over which of these forms we get rid of our nitrogenous waste for each of the different um, animal groups. So first, we said fish get rid of it in the form of ammonia. So fish is for ammonia. So right now, I'm talking about ammonia as for fish. Urea was for, if you remember, urea was the form that mammals got their... Um, nitrogen waste rid of, and also for sharks as well. And that uric acid was for insects and also for birds as well. So we have three different forms and depending on their environment, they'll get rid of it either as ammonia, urea or uric acid. But we have to get rid of it, but just how we get rid of it is, is different depending on the class of, of animals. I'm going to explain why we need to get rid of it first and, and the now and how we get rid of it as well. So we said fish, they live in a very, very um, aquatic environment, so lots of water around them, and they produce ammonia. And the reason why they can produce ammonia, so the benefit, the plus point of ammonia is that it costs little energy. It costs little energy, so they don't have to waste energy making urea or uric acid. But obviously, negative ammonia was very poisonous, so it was kind of deadly. So ammonia is deadly. But because fish live in a marine environment, and because ammonia is water soluble, so it dissolves in water, what that means is, I'm, imagine these pink molecules are going to be ammonia. So you can have ammonia building up in the body, but as soon as it, it gets produced, it can go. These are the gills here. They can go through the gills and out. Right. So one gets produced and removed. One gets produced and removed. So even though it's poisonous, it's not too big of a problem because we can produce it and get rid of it for the gills immediately. Right? So fish get rid of it, get rid of, um, get rid of ammonia through the gills. So that's an advantage. So the disadvantage is poisonous, but that's not a problem for the fish because you can get rid of it really quickly through the gills. And the advantage was that it cost little energy. Now mammals, this is the Australian example. It says the name extreme Australian examples. That's the Spinifex hopping mouse. So right here, a very good drawing. And you can imagine it lives in a desert environment in the outback. So there's a bit of water here. It's a small pool of water. 
but overall there's not much water. So uh, can you imagine this mammal, uh, this uh, hopping mouse, um, removing that? I'm going to draw urea in orange. You can can you imagine it kind of taking it out for the gills? Probably not because it, these mouse m mice don't have gills, so that's not possible. And obviously, if it's water soluble, so we can urinate it out. We can even also urinate, um, urinate ammonia out. The problem with ammonia is we have to get rid of it really fast because it's really poisonous. And the mouse can't really afford to, so I'm going to just draw white for urine. Oops, white. White for urine. Can't really afford to urinate constantly because there's not much water. So it can't do that. So what it will do instead is it will hold on to its um, nitrogenous waste in the form of urea. The good thing about urea is it's less toxic, right? So less toxic. It's still toxic, but less toxic. And it's water soluble. So it means that we can, like if the uh, mouse goes on the toilet or urinates once or twice every day, that's fine because it can hold on to urea and get rid of it once it has to get rid of it. So that's, that's a way it can conserve water. So it does this to conserve water. If it were to produce ammonia, it would have to urinate constantly, and that would be way too much water loss compared to how much water it has. So it conserve water, it will produce urea, but the negative point is that it urea requires energy, so it will require energy to make urea. So that's a bit of a waste, but it has to do that, otherwise it would um, die from the ammonia. And that's for mammals. And for insects, um, I just chose the Australian ant as an example. Again, this is supposed to be an ant, and with ants, they have very little water. They have very little water. And water definitely can't um, be removed from their skin because their skin is uh, impermeable to water. So water can't penetrate their skin. So they can't make ammonia because they can't afford to um, remove it in any way as a fish could. And they can't really make urea because they, they have so little water. Urea still takes some water. It's water soluble. It still takes some water to produce. Whereas the insects and the birds, they have very little water. So to conserve even more, so I'm going to write to conserve even more. So um, mammals have to conserve water, but insects and birds have to conserve even more water. And to make that happen, what they do is they produce uric acid. Again, the negative part about uric acid was it requires lots of energy. So they would have to, I guess, eat more food. It requires lots of energy to make. Um, but the good point was that it's not toxic, so they can keep keep hold of it for long periods of time. And it doesn't require water to get rid of. So it's not water soluble, which means you can just get rid of it in different ways. And so insects benefit that way because they can't afford to lose water in urine, so they don't produce any urine, no urine at all. They just produce this uric acid, which they can just hang on to their their wings or in the case of birds or their um, shells in, in case of insects. It's non-toxic, but the problem is it costs a lot of energy. Whereas the mammals, so for example, the spinifex hopping mouse has to use urea because urea is less toxic than ammonia and they can't really afford to urinate constantly. That's why I crossed this out. They can't really afford to urinate constantly. So what they do is they produce urea instead, which they can keep hold of in their bladder for a while and then go on and urinate once or twice a day and still get rid of their toxic, their somewhat toxic urea. But yeah, the problem is they do still also lose some water because it's water soluble. Um, but yeah, they have to have this mechanism, otherwise they wouldn't be able to survive. They wouldn't be able to cope with ammonia. And if they were to make uric acid, it would require more energy. So they preferred using urea instead. And we said the fish used ammonia. And the reason why I could do ammonia could use ammonia was because as soon as they cr um, created ammonia, which is really toxic, really poisonous, they could get rid of it really quickly through their through their um, actual gills. And the advantage of that was that ammonia cost no energy or very little energy to make. Uh, obviously, the disadvantage was that it's highly toxic, but for the actual fish itself, that's not a major problem because the fish itself is um, living in an aquatic environment, which means it doesn't have to keep hold of that ammonia for too long. It doesn't have it in a bladder. Doesn't you get um, used? It doesn't get removed for the kidneys. It just gets removed for the gills themselves. So hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, you need to be able to know maybe spinifex hopping mouse and the strain and as an example, and then why they produce uric acid, ammonia, or urea. How that's related to the the dry environment they live in, or the wet environment in the case of the fish.
Hope that uh, was helpful.